Hey everybody, Donna Lewis here with Breathe Life Ministries and this is Transformed Tuesday. And what we're going to be talking about today is abundant productivity. Who all doesn't want more productivity? Who doesn't want to feel like at the end of the day they have been productive? I mean, I know that whenever Jade gets home and he wants to know how the day went, I'm like, well, I was productive today. I got a lot done. I mean, who doesn't like to be able to say that? And that is what our discussion is going to be today. I know that's, that when you're coming through recovery, when you are learning to walk in a life that is not hindered by deception, but fueled by truth. Productivity can be a real challenge. Uh, we can get bogged down with feelings of inadequacy, um, flashbacks where your anxiety ramps up because it was kicked off by something you heard or remembered uh, or, or experienced in that moment. So productivity can be a real challenge, but guess what? God has equipped you with everything you need for life and godliness. And that's what we're going to dive into today on this Transform Tuesday. So before we go any further, we are going to say a word, word of prayer. And I want you, if you would, please to share this video and comment on this video because your comments help me know how things are going and how this is ministering to you, but it also helps others. Your comments are life giving to others. You may be stirred by the Holy Spirit to say something or ask something that is exactly what another person watching this video later needs to move forward in their walk with Christ. So please never underestimate how important um, your comments and feedback are to the overall ministry of this message in Christ. And with that, I'm just going to say a quick word of prayer, and then I'm going to share the screen and we're going to dive in. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have filled us with your Holy Spirit and that we have everything we need for life and godliness. And that life means a life that is productive and beneficial to others. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are our counselor, our teacher, and our friend. Lead us now in the power of God's word. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I also just want to do a little bit of housekeeping, and that housekeeping means that I'm going to dive in here and just make sure that I can see everybody's comments and answer any questions that may come up during this. So let me just take a quick peek here and get in to our Transformed Tuesday portion. And just a second here. Okay. It's going to take just there. Now I can see. Okay. I can see. Um, and so if you have any questions during this, or if you have any feedback or comments, I'm going to be able to see it now. So I'm really kind of stoked about that. And now I'm going to share my screen with you. This devotional is taken from 
my book, Toxic to Transformed, 100 Words of Life to Renew the Mind. And it is all God's word. God's word is the single most powerful instrument of healing you can apply to your heart and your emotions to restore them and rebuild them and to learn how to function with power in the purpose God has for you. This word is number 33 and I'm just going to blow it up so y'all all can see it. Abundant productivity. You are filled with the Holy Spirit and therefore equipped with all power, wisdom, and knowledge to walk out the life of Christ Jesus. As you draw near with a listening ear and a responsive heart, you experience his transforming power. Drinking in his rich words, you become more and more aware of his mind and personality. You become intuitive of his desires and quick to fulfill them. The end result is abundant productivity within his kingdom and the most amazing sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. This is Muffin, everybody. And yes, she is uh, joining us today. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. She was just snoozing on my lap. Now she's decided to uh, join the meeting. So what we see here is that when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and receive the Holy Spirit, you receive everything that Jesus has. You receive his sonship. In other words, you are adopted into God's family. God literally becomes your father, your adoptive father. You become a co-heir with Christ. So let's put it in a fairy tale for you. You are a homeless child living on the street. You have no family, no father, no mother, no name. One day, a prince picks you up off the street and takes you to his castle and introduces you to his father, who is the king of the whole kingdom. And that king chooses to adopt you as his child with all the rights and benefits of a prince or princess in his kingdom. You become a co-heir. You are a co-heir with Christ. You receive the Holy Spirit who searches all things, even the very depths of God. 
the same spirit that searches out and knows everything there is to know about God because he is one with God is now filling you. Is this making sense? Are you reading this and, and coming together with this? You are a co-heir with Christ. You are a member of his family. You are a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. You have the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit equips you for everything you have to do in this life. Abundant productivity. Second Peter 1 8 reads, since these virtues are already planted deep within and you possess them in abundant supply, they will keep you from being inactive or fruitless in your pursuit of knowing Jesus Christ more intimately. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share real quick and just take a quick peek to see if there are any questions or comments. Okay, we're doing good. So, let's look at 2 Peter a little more in depth. Because the Holy Spirit comes and fills you. But God in all of his wisdom structured us so that we actually have to participate in our own growth and understanding of what it means to be a member of his family, what it means to be a citizen in his kingdom, what it means to be a co-heir with Christ. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 3. May grace, actually, I'm going to back up even to verse two. May grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and Jesus, our Lord. For his divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness his divine power. Remember how when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we receive the Holy Spirit, his divine power. That divine power equips us with everything we need for life, which is your life, going shopping, getting your groceries, raising your children, completing work, getting the job done well at your employer, whatever you need for life and godliness, developing your relationship with God in Christ. Getting rid of those unhealthy habits. Getting rid of those unhealthy relationships. 
getting rid of a toxic mindset about yourself and others. Life and godliness. Getting rid of those panic attacks. Right? Getting rid of your phobias. Anything that is tying you down and weighing you down and causing you to be fruitless, unproductive. Let's keep reading. For his divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. By these, he has given us very great and precious promises so that through them, you may share in the divine nature. You are a co-heir with Christ. You share in the divine nature. Escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desires, toxic belief patterns, self-destructive um, habits. I mean, let's think about self-destructive habits. I mean, it's easy to relate a self-destructive habit to a drug addiction or alcoholism. It's not so easy to think about escaping the corruption that is in the world because of evil desires. What about those evil desires that that creep in when we look in the mirror and we start degrading ourselves in our mind? Ugh, you're so this. Ugh, you're so that. Right? Ugh, I wish my hair was different. Ugh, I wish I was 40 pounds lighter. Ugh. I wish I didn't have that zit, right? I mean, come on, we do it. Ugh, I look so old. These are toxic. These are not building you up. They're tearing, they're tearing you down. When God looks at you, he sees the righteousness of God in Christ. He sees the bride of Christ, spotless and blameless. He sees the beautiful creation that he made you. So when you begin to cut yourself down, that's not okay. That's not in alignment with God's divine nature in you. Um, other things, uh, maybe it's an unhealthy eating style where you're not consuming, you're not treating the temple of the Holy Spirit with honor and respect because you're feeding it foods that are toxic to you too many, uh, too much sugar, too much caffeine, too much, uh, you know, uh, processed foods. You know, these little things in and of themselves may not be seen, but if you are constantly feeding your body on things that are unhealthy, you're doing damage to the temple of God. And that's not in alignment with the word of God. Oh, let's think about one more before we move forward. Um, because like I said, it's really easy for us to look at 
the scriptures and look at a passage that says the uh, corruption that is in the world because of evil desires and automatically go to the worst things, adultery, um, murder, theft, lying, right? Addictions like drug addictions and alcohol addictions, but we don't think about those things that are sneaky in our life, like criticalness against yourself and others, not feeding your body healthy things, being kind to your body with good nutritious food, good exercise, getting enough sunlight, sleeping properly. These things are important. And when we're not in alignment with God's word in how he made us, it, we're, we're still out of balance, just like somebody who's pumping heroin into their arm. Um, one more. How about comparing yourself to others? Comparing yourself. Oh, so-and-so, she sings like a bird. Oh, so-and-so, he can preach like no one else. Oh, so-and-so, they can make so many beautiful, creative things. I'm not like that. I'm not as thin as that person. I'm not as athletic as that person. I'm not as creative as this person. Um, comparing yourself. I'm not as smart as this person. I don't make as much money as this person. God made you unique. Unique. There isn't anyone else like you in the universe. You are hand crafted by a master creator who is surpassed by no one. You are given a divine purpose in the kingdom of God that no one else but you can fulfill. The struggles you've faced in life are like instruments, carving instruments in the hand of a master sculptor. And he's going to use those points of pain in your life to heal multitudes. The struggles you've faced in life are unique to you. And therefore you are uniquely equipped to do a job no one else but you can do. So when you compare yourself to someone else, you are devaluing a masterpiece in front of the master artist. I mean, can you imagine Mona Lisa stepping off the page and <laughs> looking at Da Vinci and saying, you know, you really could have done my nose different. And could you please have carved a few pounds off of me? I mean, really. 
And you know, you didn't really capture the right side of my face because this profile is much better than this profile. Thank you. <laughs> You are uniquely you. There is no comparison. There is no comparison. Because there's no one else like you. And you are perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Do you believe that today? So we need to participate with God in coming into the fullness of his destiny for our life. And we do that this way. Moving on, we're in 2 Peter chapter one now we're in verse five for this very reason make every effort to supplement your faith with goodness that's what we were talking about when we were saying you know we don't want to compare ourselves to others that's goodness when we stop comparing ourselves we want to treat this temple with honor by feeding it nutritious foods and giving it the sleep it needs and the exercise it needs and the sunlight it needs. That's goodness. We want to be kind with our words to ourself and others. That's goodness, right? Supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge. Feed yourself on the word of God. Knowledge with self-control. Self-control with endurance. It's also known as patience. Keep going. Don't quit. Sometimes you're going to get tired. Sometimes you're just going to be like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. But that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. It's not about your strength. It's about Christ's strength within you. That's where our endurance comes from. Endurance with godliness. Getting deeper and deeper into our awareness and our relationship with God in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit and spending time with him. Godliness with brotherly affection, that is mercy and compassion and understanding for yourself and others. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Brotherly affection with love. This is how we participate in the process. For if these qualities are yours and increasing, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The person who lacks these things is blind and short-sighted and has forgotten the cleansing from his past sins. Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, because if you do these things, you will never stumble. This is how we become abundantly productive. Abundantly productive. 
Jesus said, it is God's will that you don't just bear a little bit of fruit, but much fruit. He created you with destiny. If you are alive and have breath in your lungs, you have destiny. You have purpose. And that purpose is uniquely created for you and you are the only person who can do it through Christ and his power working in you. So with that, I just wanna take a quick peek and see if there's any questions. Okay. So, I'm eager to hear what you have to say about this um, and what your thoughts are on this. Um, what would you say is your primary form of communication with God? Mine, I would have to say, is just conversation. I spend a lot of time <laughs> conversing with God um, throughout the day, just conversing with him. Um, the things that he's been talking with me a lot are actually the things I just shared with you, things like not comparing myself, um, speaking kindly about myself and to myself. As Risa puts it, uh, um, my friend who's a life coach, being your own best friend. You know that friend that always builds you up, that always has the right thing to say in the right moment? Being your own best friend. Um, treating my body with respect and kindness, getting out and exercising, putting nutritional food inside of it and not junk. These are things that the Lord's been working with me on um, and letting me know that, yes, you can do this. You can do this. So what is the way God has been that you spend time connecting to God? In, and what role does God's word play in that for you? It, it plays a really huge role in me in me. I don't know how I would get through this life if it hadn't been for my relationship with the with with God through his word, because, you know, this is the truth. The world lies to us all the time. The world is constantly telling us we're not enough that someone else is better. And God in his word says, I am enough. The creator of the universe is enough and I give all of myself to you. So you through me are more than enough. That's my word for you today. Abundant productivity is yours through the power of the Holy Spirit. Leave your comments. Please like this video and share this video. And I will be with you again next week on Transform Tuesday. God bless.